I am Laura the movie queen's ace agent. We have been in love for six years but dared not to make it public. Yet she admitted to being in a relationship with her first love, a D-list actor, on the red carpet. Since then, I have become the biggest cuckold in the circle. Later, she lost both fame and fortune, crying and kneeling in front of me, begging me to pull her out of the abyss. But I walked away with my true love, smiling, not leaving a trace. Sorry, you're blocking the way of the real movie queen of my house. This is the sixth year of my secret relationship with movie queen Laura. When we first started dating, Laura said that for the sake of her acting career, it was better not to make our relationship public. As her agent, I agreed. And just on our six-year anniversary, Laura's first love, Makoto, came back. Everyone in the circle knows that this little first love is the white moonlight in Laura's heart. Back then, Laura broke up with her family for the sake of being with Makoto, causing a big scene in the circle, because Makoto, though handsome, came from a family with a bad reputation. All of them were thieves. Which parents in this world would want their precious daughter to marry into such a family? In the end, they still separated. After all, reality is always cruel. When Makoto boarded the ferry leaving the country, Laura chased after him, crying, but only saw his determined back. He didn't even leave a word for her. Since then, Makoto has become a thorn in Laura's heart. Later, Laura's family sent her into the entertainment industry to act, and this unpleasant love history was buried by time. As the ace agent of an entertainment company, I got to know her and we became close. Laura said she fell in love with me at first sight and pursued me actively for a long time before we got together. Because of my connections in the circle, she was able to easily participate in the literary films produced by top directors and won the Best Actress Award. On the awards night, she stood on stage, thanking me tearfully, but only as her agent. That was Laura's first award. She was so happy that night, drinking a lot with me. After drinking too much, she drunkenly threw herself onto the bed, hugging my waist and not letting go. Like a spoiled child. Marco. Am I standing high enough now? Can you see me? Don't leave me. Okay. Marco. Laura's hands trembled as she gently touched my face, but it seemed like she was looking at someone else in her eyes. How could I leave you, baby? Back then, I thought she was just happy about winning the award and laughed foolishly with her. Until later, when I saw Makoto, I realized how much I looked like him. It was to the extent that with just a thin veil, one could mistake one for the other. No wonder she said she fell in love with me at first sight. No wonder she was so emotional that night, and spoke to me in a worshipful manner. His name is Makoto. Mine is Marco. Marco. Makoto. So that's it. She was never calling my name. All these years, the person in her heart has always been him. And what about me? Marco. Who worked so hard for Laura's career all these years. A mere substitute. A grain of rice that can never compare to the white moonlight. Ridiculous. Truly ridiculous. Reuniting with Makoto happened on a talent show. Laura was the special guest mentor for that episode, and Makoto was a contestant. The moment he saw Laura on stage, his perfect composure instantly collapsed, and he even messed up his moves. You, contestant, are you afraid of the stage, or haven't you practiced enough? Dancing like that, you should go home and sell sweet potatoes. Being a star isn't for you. All the mentors harshly criticized his unprofessionalism because he had no backing. Makoto bit his lip in disappointment, looking longingly at the only silent judge, Laura. I stood in front of the backstage TV, watching Laura sitting there. Although she didn't speak up for him, her eyes were red. The joy of reuniting after a long time and the grievances over the years. Even as a movie queen, she couldn't control her emotions. It was an expression I had never seen in all these years. Seeing her like that, my heart suddenly felt sour and bitter, like eating an unripe plum. Extremely uncomfortable, originally. Makoto was supposed to be eliminated by the show, but due to Laura's strong request, he was kept. The entertainment industry is always dark. That night, all the contestants who advanced were sent to a banquet. Laura and I were also there. It was full of influential bigwigs and old bosses. Old in age but not in their desires. Makoto, being handsome and having eyes that seemed to flirt unconsciously, was very popular among these old lechers. Soon, a greasy, obese woman wanted to be his sugar mama, insisting he drink wine mouth to mouth with her. Oh, handsome boy come here and serve your auntie. The fat woman smirked and beckoned, scaring Makoto, whose reluctance made me feel schadenfreude. But soon, I couldn't laugh anymore, because Laura's reaction was even more intense than Makoto's. Watching Makoto being humiliated, she bit her lip and pinched my hand under the table. Maybe she didn't even realize it herself. Her sharp red nails dug into my flesh, and soon my palm was bleeding. Just as the fat woman's thick lips were about to touch Makoto, Laura couldn't hold back anymore. Enough. What are you doing? It's disgusting. Attending this banquet is my greatest humiliation. She pushed me hard, grabbed the red wine in front of her, and splashed it on the fat woman's face without a word. Laura, 
You're drunk. Sensing trouble, I quickly tried to stop her, but she ignored me, holding Makoto's hand and walking out without looking back. The others at the table looked at each other, and the fat woman's face turned terrifyingly dark. I thought to myself, this is it. We're done. The fat woman was the show's biggest investor, and Laura had completely offended her. Laura left with Makoto, leaving the mess to me, that night, to apologize for her. I didn't know how much I drank. I ended up with a bleeding stomach, clutching my stomach and collapsing on the floor. Their words echoed in my ears. Marco, isn't Laura your woman? Being cuckolded in front of everyone, feels better than this wine, doesn't it? You can't even control the woman you made famous. What kind of men are you? Before passing out from the pain, I felt someone touch my face. When I woke up, I was in the hospital, and it was the next day. The nurse said a girl brought me here, probably a kind waitress. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone. No messages from Laura all night. It seems Makoto's appearance really made her forget everything. I had no heart to recuperate, so I pulled out the four and left the hospital with my coat. When I got back to Laura's house, I found her car in the yard. Perfect. I had something to tell her, not just about our relationship but also about my contract renewal. Makoto, don't go, please. Hearing Makoto, I stopped in my tracks, seeing the two entangled in the yard. Laura clung tightly to Makoto from behind, her eyes red, pleading and acting spoiled. She had never treated me with such a look. You already have a fiancé. After leaving me, you immediately started dating that man for six years, right? Do you know? After being forcibly sent abroad by your family, I was beaten by fierce foreigners every day. I barely escaped with my life. Otherwise, I'd be dead. I came back just to survive. I don't understand why my poverty made your mother look down on me. Makoto struggled a bit, his tone cold and resentful as if he had really suffered a lot abroad, but from my angle, his expression was smug, like a small man achieving his goals, his indifferent reaction only made Laura more anxious, she clung tighter like an octopus, no, I don't love him, I don't love that man, he's just my agent, Makoto, he just looks a bit like you, my heart has always been yours, I don't want him anymore, I only want you, I'll change agents to solve everything, fine, fine, no one would have thought the once proud movie queen would be so humble, no one would have thought I, Marco, the top agent in the entertainment industry, was just a substitute, I did so much for Laura's career, only to end up as someone to be replaced, watching them hug and kiss in the yard, my hands trembled into fists, my eyes red, Laura, I never forgot you either, Makoto smiled and kissed Laura, looking at me with victory in his eyes, I sneered, didn't push the door open, and walked away, well, may you two, a pretentious coquette and a simp, be together forever, Laura, between us, who replaced whom, isn't certain yet, since that day, negative news and gossip about Laura have been constantly emerging online. Among the most sensational was the rumor that she was allegedly keeping a young lover hidden in a luxurious apartment. A few days ago, paparazzi caught her little boyfriend, the same Makoto whom Laura had staunchly supported on the talent show. Makoto's dark past was soon uncovered by netizens. For instance, both his parents had been imprisoned for theft. Makoto had impregnated a classmate in high school, dropped out, and became a street thug, and so on public opinion was boiling over, with the internet full of insults towards this disgraced celebrity, and Laura's fans were also publicly denouncing her, what, Laura chose such a boyfriend, he's just a scumbag, you don't understand, it's just like a rotten pot with a rotten lid, two of a kind, Laura must be trash too, I used to think she and her agent were a couple, the agent is so handsome, she must be blind, in the past, as soon as such rumors started to surface, I would have had the PR department handle it, but this time, I didn't intervene, allowing the scandal between Laura and Makoto to dominate the top search results. From an agent's perspective, an artist with ulterior motives should be left to grow wild like weeds outside. Over time, a wildfire will naturally burn her to the ground. From the perspective of a lover of six years, Laura was the one who was unkind first, so she couldn't blame me, Marco, for watching indifferently. Colleagues and old friends from the industry saw the news and called to ask me about it. I simply responded over the phone, I'm not sure. Laura and I have already ended our contract. Three days later, with the public opinion still raging online, I received a call from Laura. Marco, what kind of agent are you? The insults against me online could pile up into a mountain. Are you just sitting there doing nothing? Or are all these online attacks against me you're doing? You are truly malicious. On the other end of the line, she was furious and relentless with her scolding. Clearly, she was driven mad by the online abuse over these days and suddenly remembered she had an agent. But did you ever think of me? your boyfriend of six years, when you were having fun with your white moonlight these past days. Miss Laura, I think you've been too busy to remember. Our contract expired a long time ago. I sneered on the other end of the phone, calmly facing her tantrum. 
What? When did it expire? I didn't know. Just when you were being all lovey-dovey with your white moonlight. Seizing the moment of silence, I continued. We're finished. In terms of work and feelings, we're over in every possible way. After saying that, I hung up and blocked her number. Feeling the world finally quiet and my heart incredibly at ease. Later, to escape the online abuse, Laura disappeared from the internet for a long time. By then, I had already resigned from that entertainment company. The entertainment industry is full of smart people. As soon as the news of my resignation as an ace agent came out, I became a hot commodity for various major companies. Soon, companies with generous offers proactively reached out to me. Half a month later, at a film festival, I saw Laura again. She was walking the red carpet with Makoto, their arms intertwined, looking extremely intimate. Hey, without me, her dress was the cheapest option available. A dense array of microphones, blinding flashlights, and aggressive reporters. Hello, Miss Laura, are you and Mr. Makoto walking the red carpet together to officially announce your relationship? Facing the camera, Laura smiled shyly, snuggling up to Makoto. Makoto smirked and kissed Laura in front of the cameras. Let's keep it a secret for now. I want to announce this good news on the awards stage. Though he said that, it was basically a confirmation of their relationship. The internet may have a memory, but it's clearly not a good one, because as I stood not far away, those who knew me laughed. After all, for the past six years, people in the circle knew I was Laura's boyfriend. Now, I had become the well-known cuckold. As I was thinking this, a reporter seemed to read my mind and asked. I heard that Laura's agent, Mr. Marco, has always been rumored to be her partner. Is this true? Or is your relationship with Makoto an affair? The sharp question made Laura's face turn pale, and she uncontrollably looked towards my corner. This caught the reporter's attention, and in the next second, microphones were thrust in front of me. Ah, uh, Mr. Wong is here too. Can you give a brief response? Laura's gaze was like needles on my body, full of panic, fear, but more of a threat. She was afraid I would say something detrimental to her and Makoto in public, but facing the cameras, I would never lose my composure like her. Nor did I want to be the target of criticism, so I just smiled gracefully. Sorry, I have resigned, leaving only those words. I walked away. Mr. Wong, here is tonight's winner's list. I sat in the backstage lounge and took the list handed to me by the organizers. In the best actress column, it was Laura's name. Oh, I remembered. We hadn't fallen out yet at that time. So with my connections, her poorly performing movie could win an award. But now, she foolishly severed ties with me. She thought that having won best actress once, she was the queen of the entertainment industry, but she wasn't even worthy of being a footwasher. Someone like her, worthy of being best actress. Pointing at Laura's name, I coldly looked at the organizers, making them tremble. After all, they got the hosting rights because of my influence. Then, shall we change it? They cautiously tried to please me. I nodded, my gaze scanning a row of actresses, finally settling on a familiar face, feeling a surge of emotion. No, let's choose based on merit. The award ceremony began as scheduled. And soon it was time to announce the best actress. And now, the winner of the best actress at this film festival is. I sat in the front row, casually glancing back. Because of my previous promise, Laura was confident, subtly straightening her posture. Ha, huh, fool, you've already betrayed me. And you still think I'd let you win the award and announce to the world that you cuckolded me? Or do you really believe you have what it takes to win best actress? The best actress is. Let's congratulate, Lisa. The camera focused on a serene radiant woman under the spotlight, Lisa. She seemed stunned, taking a moment before standing up and smiling as she accepted the award. Behind her, a venomous glare pierced towards me, but I didn't even bother to turn around. I knew it was Laura's silent curse. Marco, what do you mean? You clearly said the best actress award was mine. After knowing each other for so long, can't you bear to see me happy? On the way to the restroom, Laura blocked my path, her face twisted with rage. I looked at her beautiful face, once a source of affection now only disgusted me. I've told you before, Laura, you became a best actress because the men behind you was me. Without me, you are nothing. I looked at her with disdain, showing a dismissive expression that hit her arrogant pride hard. You bastard. You just want revenge. Right. Ha ha. Let me tell you, I'll be fine without you. As she spoke, her expression turned frenzied with shame, and she even raised her hand to hit me. I grabbed her hand sharply and slapped her back, leaving a red mark on her face. You. You dare hit a woman. She held her face, looking at me in disbelief. I sneered, wiping my hand as if touching something dirty. I don't hit good women, but for a slut like you, I hit one when I see one. Get lost. This is the men's restroom. Do you want to be on tomorrow's headlines? Laura attacks men's restroom. Watching her flee in panic, I spat and prepared to return to the venue. Marco. But in the hallway, I heard a familiar voice. 
I turned to see Lisa in a white gown, quietly looking at me. Did you give me this award? Marco, are you planning to use this award to crush me again? Lisa was my first love. We met at a banquet trying to secure film investments. Lisa was an actress brought by the production team, playing a minor role. The Cole Boss Investor, however, leered at her, wanting to take advantage. National Goddess Lisa, with a face as pure as Jasmine. At that moment, her face was flushed red from the man's humiliation. Yet she refused to yield, more like resilient reeds. She rejected the Cole Boss's room card but was pressed onto the table in anger, with many filthy insults. Stupid slut, out here to entertain. What are you pretending for? I'll take care of you right now. The coal boss had money, and no one dared to move, except me. Bang. I picked up a wine bottle and smashed it on the old pervert's head. The red liquid. I couldn't tell if it was wine or blood. Mr. Zhao. Acting like a hooligan in front of me. Isn't that too much? The men rolled on the ground in pain. I squatted, patting his face. When he saw my face clearly, he gasped and fled, because I am Marco, the sole heir of the Wang business empire. Being an agent was just my hobby. Lisa was very grateful for my rescue, and we became good friends. At first, I was curious because in the entertainment industry, few women remain pure, but Lisa was famous for not succumbing to the unspoken rules, so despite her breathtaking beauty, she could only get small roles. I love acting, not being a star, she said this to me, which was exactly the answer I wanted. I looked at Lisa, her bright phoenix eyes shining with love and dreams, like stars in the sky, and I was the person who could easily pluck the brightest star from the sky. So, naturally, she became my artist and my lover. She was the high cold goddess in the eyes of fans, as elegant and pure as a swan. But when facing me, she was a shy, simple girl. Many times, in the middle of the night, holding her slender waist and kissing her, I could feel her gentle trembling, shyly nestling in my arms. Marco, I love you, I love you so much. Every time Lisa said she loved me, her soft voice was like sweet candy. No man could resist. So, every night, the kisses became more passionate, the love more intense, but later, we broke up. In those years, with my connections and manipulations, Lisa became a hot commodity in the entertainment industry. It was during this time that I suggested our breakup, a drastic, cliff-edge breakup, without me to rely on. Lisa's resources plummeted, and she returned to playing minor roles, subject to the whims of others. Why, Marco, yesterday, you were talking about proposing to me. Today isn't April Fool's Day. This joke isn't funny. Lisa's eyes were filled with tears as she trembled and questioned me. It wasn't because she was treated coldly by the crew, but because of our inexplicable breakup. I turned my head away, unwilling to look at her, and hurtful words spewed forth. Why? Because I'm tired of you. Ha. Huh. You're such a bumpkin who's never seen the world. A little sweetness. A wave of the hand. And you come running. Lisa. Look at your background. Everything you have is because of me. What right do you have to be with me? My cruel words would have made an ordinary girl cry and run away. But she stood there. Looking at me, Lisa shook her head, her red eyes full of sorrow, like a river flowing against the current. She stepped forward and hugged me, her tears soaking my shirt. This was the most humble posture for the once proud her. I don't believe it. If you're really like this, why did you save me back then? You know I was with you not for fame or fortune. I sneered, lifting her chin and lightly patting her face in humiliation. I just wanted to see you rise to the top and then fall back to the dust overnight. It's very amusing. The taste of being lifted up and then destroyed. Isn't it great? This is who I am, and there's nothing you can do about it. With that, I pushed her away forcefully and pulled out a million dollar check, throwing it in her face. Get lost. Break up fee. Keep it. Lisa stood there frozen, and I strode away without looking back. On the way out, it was pouring rain. I stared at the scenery outside the window. Silent. Only the driver that day knew that the young master cried with the rain. Marco, are you planning to use this award to crush me again? Years later, I met her again in this arena of fame and fortune. The power of the white moonlight is indeed immense. And Lisa, who once resembled a delicate jasmine, now looked more like an enchanting white rose. The moment I saw her, my heart began to race uncontrollably. Just like a few hours ago when I saw that face backstage, my heart was pounding hard. Lisa, after a long separation, I wanted to ask her how she had been all these years, how her movies were going, and I wanted to explain the misunderstandings of the past, but the usually eloquent me found myself at a loss for words. In the end, I only managed to say, no, this is what you deserve. These words were true, from the bottom of my heart. After our breakup, Lisa endured all these years on her own. She is an excellent actress, the best among the line of actresses, deserving a Best Actress Award more than a vase like Laura. Do you think I would believe you? People don't fall into the same river twice. After ten years, her eyebrows and eyes were just as I remembered. Lisa still had that proud and aloof demeanor, 
but now her eyes were slightly red, biting her lip as she questioned me. Or do you see me as a tool to make Laura jealous? Laura, what does she have to do with this? I frowned and shook my head, saying only, how can you compare to her? I meant that a superficial vase like Laura could never compare to her. Unexpectedly, Lisa frowned at my words and walked away, even more annoyed, lifting her dress in anger. Sigh. After all these years apart, her temper has only grown. Watching her back, I sighed, starting to miss the shy girl she used to be. Congratulations on winning Best Actress. In the empty hallway, I called out to her. The only response was the sound of her high heels clacking away, seemingly stomping harder in response to my words. All right then. Still so adorable. News of Lisa winning Best Actress quickly hit the entertainment headlines. An actress without any backing or connections achieving such success would inevitably attract rumors. Especially since this time, she had offended the narrow-minded Laura. For a while, headlines such as, Lisa steals Laura's Best Actress title, and, Lisa becomes a toy for a big shot, flooded the internet. With Laura secretly hiring internet trolls to manipulate public opinion, the online comments were overwhelmingly negative. Oh my god. She's so shameless. This Best Actress award clearly belonged to our Laura. How can this seductive vixen be so hateful? Ha ha. Pretending to be pure and innocent. But who knows how many people she slept with behind the scenes. Yeah. I heard that the award was originally Laura's. Her name was even engraved on the trophy. But Lisa snatched it away. Poor Laura. Lisa. Get out of the entertainment industry. Lisa. Get out of the entertainment industry. Lisa. Get out of the entertainment industry. The overwhelming negative news. Vicious insults. And filthy language weighed down on Lisa like a mountain. It seemed that overnight. She became the biggest sinner. And all of Laura's misfortunes were blamed on her. I scrolled through the absurdity of the online world in my office. Coldly smiling. Brother Wong. Is it time? My assistant knocked on my door. I nodded. It was time. Soon. As the insults reached their peak. An influential blogger in the industry spoke up for Lisa. But watching the movie. Lisa's performance was indeed excellent. She brought the small role to life. Much better than that vase Laura. Has everyone forgotten what Laura said at the red carpet? In the red carpet interview. Laura said she had good news to announce on stage. But at that time. No one should have known who the actual winner was. How could she be so certain she'd be on stage? Dear audience. Have you figured out who the real protagonist of this drama is? This influential blogger's words shifted the public opinion at the height of the insults. Then, the opportunistic netizen started a tug of war. But Lisa must have a backer. I'm a staff member. And I saw her backstage being overly familiar with a high-ranking man. Are there any pure women in the entertainment industry? They're all corrupt. If she's innocent, she should prove it. These comments reminded me of something. It was time to mend fences with someone and make things official. See, Marco. Even without you, our Laura won't suffer. Laura and Makoto stood in front of me, hand in hand, looking smug. The online backlash was still escalating. It seemed they had invested a lot in this campaign, determined to get their revenge. Looking at Laura's gloating face, I felt a deep sense of unfamiliarity and even a strong aversion. How was I so blind to have spent six years with someone like this? Now, it seemed she and that pretty boy Makoto were a perfect match. I was the lucky one to escape this misery. This kind of tactic is like harming yourself to hurt your enemy. Lisa won't care, and I just see you both as a pair of perfect fools. What did you say, you dare to insult me? Sure enough, Makoto, who was nothing more than a thug, immediately turned into a rabid dog at my words. He shoved Laura aside and raised his fist to hit me. Dealing with someone like him, I wouldn't even dirty a finger, so I pointed behind him. Oh look, when did the reporters get here? At the mention of reporters, Makoto's demeanor instantly changed, transforming into an obedient boy. Laura had put in a lot of effort to clean up his image, explaining away his previous scandals as rumors. But when he turned and saw no one behind him, his face twisted back into a snarl. You dared to trick me. Enraged, Makoto lunged at me like a beast, devoid of humanity. Just as his fist was about to connect, a loud click was heard. This time, real reporters had arrived. I took a punch, but Makoto's violent behavior was caught live on camera. In an instant, all of Laura's painstaking efforts to rebuild his image were shattered, wasted, and they were back to square one. Marco, we've known each other for so long, do you really have to push me this far? If you're still angry, still jealous, then I'll apologize, all right. If you want, I can. After the reporters left, Laura softened her tone, hugging herself as she negotiated with me. Can what? You don't think I'm still pining for you, willing to be your secret lover like before, do you? Laura, it's morning. It's time to wake up from your daydream. I cut her off, genuinely amused by her audacity. I had never seen someone so shameless. As security escorted her out, Laura was still shouting at me. Marco, if you help Lisa bully me, 
I will make sure neither of you has it easy. A joke. Who will make whose life difficult is yet to be determined. Hiss, be gentle. It hurt a bit when Lisa was applying medicine to my wound. After the earlier commotion, I didn't know how long she had been standing outside the door watching. She only came over after everyone had left. Now you feel the pain. Why didn't you dodge the punch earlier? Did it make your heart ache? You're such a smooth talker. I. I wasn't worried. Lisa's hand trembled a bit as she applied the medicine. When I held her hand, she didn't resist but instead her eyes reddened. Laura targeted you, and I'm sorry you had to suffer, Lisa. Hearing this, Lisa's previously straight back suddenly softened, looking very aggrieved. After all, she earned this award purely through her own merit, but Laura's enraged jealousy subjected her to online abuse. All those insults, like snowflakes, slowly gathered into a snowball that could crush a person completely. Lisa had been bearing all this alone, without confiding in anyone. My single expression of concern made her emotions completely collapse. She sniffled, crying as she threw herself into my arms. I stroked her hair and gently wiped away her sparkling tears. Lissy, let's get back together. I held Lisa tightly, as if she were a precious treasure. Those six years with Laura, although fulfilling, left me with a sense of disconnection, without the feeling of love for a long time. Until the day I reunited with her, my heart pounded, and I understood the meaning of love. Are you lying to me again, Marco? Are you going to deceive me like before? Are you going to lift me up high and then let me fall hard again? Lisa wiped her tears, questioning me softly but still unwilling to leave my warm embrace. Is your father's uremia cured? Hearing this, Lisa froze. She didn't expect me to know about it. A kind person helped. How did you know? Could it be? I sighed and told her everything from the past. I had also felt aggrieved and had bottled it up for a long time. Back then, Lisa's father was suffering from uremia and urgently needed a kidney to stay alive. At that time, her career was at its peak, but she didn't tell me to avoid worrying me. With her connections, where could she find a compatible kidney? Meanwhile, someone informed my father about my relationship with Lisa. He was a businessman who looked down on actresses and used this to coerce me into leaving Lisa. I still remember my father's authoritative face. He said that if I left that woman and agreed to Laura's pursuit, he would help find a suitable kidney for Lisa's father and cover all the expenses. At that time, I hadn't taken control of the business yet. I had no choice but to leave her with the harshest words. As I spoke, I noticed my chest was wet. Looking down, I saw that Lisa was crying. Just like when I broke up with her back then. Lisa, do you still blame me? I gently held her face, full of tenderness. I do blame you, she said, hitting me lightly with her fists, her voice still choked with tears. I blame you for not telling me earlier. Lisa and I got back together, but the news exploded again. This time the headline was, Shamelessly woman hooks up with Wang family's old boss, caught in the act of being a mistress. The accompanying video indeed showed Lisa getting into a car belonging to the Wang group, with even some blurry, suggestive footage. Upon checking, I found it was footage from a TV drama over 10 years ago, with faces AI swapped to look like Lisa and my dad. The comments were even more interesting. Wow, Lisa really does have strong backing, huh? That old Wangman is over 70, and she still wants to sleep with him. She must be starving. TSK TSK TSK, such a woman will stop at nothing to get what she wants, even if it means eating anything. She used to pretend to be pure and innocent, but she's just a slut after all. These filthy comments gave me a headache. I closed the video and immediately sent a link to the group's legal department. Meanwhile, I received a text from Makoto, you're still far from being able to fight us. These idiots, the scheming in the entertainment circle is just child's play. But daring to mess with the Wang group and my dad, they were really kicking a steel plate. As the online noise continued, I had Lisa remain silent while the Wang group issued two news releases. One was a formal statement declaring that we would take legal action against the rumor mongers and included a lawyer's letter. The names of the defendants were clearly stated as Laura and Makoto. The other was an official announcement of our relationship. The post was short, only a few words, no backing, just a good wife, accompanied by a picture of our marriage certificate. I believe there is no more dignified way to announce love than having it on the front page of a major corporate website for seven days. And this dignity was what I wanted to give Lisa, after all the grievances she had endured over the years. But this was far from enough. I used my connections in the entertainment industry to bring up a lot of Laura and Makoto's old scandals, including her cheating, winning fake awards, and fraudulent donations, all of which I had previously suppressed, now all came out at once. And Makoto's carefully crafted new image collapsed overnight. The fat woman who had flirted with him at the banquet still held a grudge. She prepared a bombshell and revealed Makoto's numerous misdeeds abroad. Makoto was not driven away by Laura's family back then. 
He had taken money from Laura's family while also hooking up with an American woman and living it up abroad. And according to the timeline, he was with the American woman while he hadn't broken up with Laura yet. The two even had a mixed-race son abroad, living a carefree life. This time he returned because he was caught cheating while his American partner was pregnant, beaten up by foreigners, and fled back to stage a reunion with Laura. I held Lisa as we finished reading the entire scandal on the computer and couldn't help but applaud. Amazing, truly more dramatic than a movie. Laura and Makoto are wanted by the police for malicious defamation. I heard that after everything was exposed, Laura and Makoto had a huge fight. In a fit of rage, Laura lost control and stabbed Makoto in the stomach. When the police arrived at their house to arrest them, they found Makoto lying in a pool of blood, barely alive, and Laura was nowhere to be found. The former movie queen had turned into a fugitive, a truly lamentable turn of events. Oh, no, she was no longer a movie queen. The awards of a disgraced artist had long been revoked by the committee, ready to be reissued at the upcoming film festival. Before accompanying Lisa on the red carpet, a shadowy figure sneaked into the dressing room. When I discovered and dragged the figure out from the corner, I realized it was Laura. She looked haggard, filthy like a beggar, and emitted a foul odor. She must have been hiding in some garbage dump to evade the police these past few days. I pinched my nose in disgust and shielded Lisa behind me. Laura's gaze was as venomous as a wolf's. Marco, please save me. My family has abandoned me. No one wants me. Don't you still love me? Save me, please. She stumbled towards me, her smile uglier than crying, but I kicked her to the ground. I'm married now, lady. What delusional dream are you still having, Marco? You ungrateful scoundrel. Without me, the movie queen, what would you be as an ace agent? I am your glory, your badge, and that vase behind you is nothing. Bah. Calling me fickle, but you left me and found another. Seeing my heartless demeanor, she tore off her facade, looking mad. I sneered, grabbing her throat and glaring coldly at her. Laura, I did consider it. I thought about loving you sincerely, about marrying you, but you. All these years, you only saw me as a substitute for Makoto. You were blind as a bat to treat me like that bastard. When you used Makoto's photo as your chat background, when you engraved his initials on our ring, did you ever think about me? Laura, people like you don't deserve happiness. I looked down at her as if she were garbage and then threw her away. Laura staggered and fell to the ground, watching in despair as Lisa wiped my hands. She sobbed on the floor. Bitch, it's all because you seduced Marco that he stopped loving me. I hate you. I hate you both. A sharp scream rang out, and a flash of a knife was seen. Laura had raised a blood-stained knife, charging at Lisa with a murderous intent. Bang. The next second, she screamed in pain. Her hand had been shot, leaving a bloody hole. The police, who had arrived just in time, easily subdued her. Lisa had secretly called the police, and they arrived just in time to witness Laura's attack. As Laura was escorted away by the police, it was also time for us to walk the red carpet. I held Lisa's hand and walked past the disheveled Laura, smiling as I said. Sorry, you're blocking the real movie queen's way.